2023 emerged as a year of groundbreaking discoveries, shedding new light on the fascinating journey of our ancient human ancestors. Here are our top 5. 1. Ancestors of modern humans nearly went extinct around 900,000 years ago. Human ancestors in Africa were pushed to the brink of extinction around 900,000 years ago. For more than 100,000 years, our numbers hovered at around 1,300 individuals. Scientists uncovered humans' brush with extinction by looking at the genomes of more than 3,000 modern-day humans from both African and non-African populations. Newly discovered analytical tools and advances in genome sequencing help them investigate the diversity of today's genetic sequences and work backward to see what happened long ago. They found that between 813,000 and 930,000 years ago, the ancestors of modern humans went through a severe bottleneck when they lost about 98.7% of their breeding population, and didn't expand again for another 117,000 years. Before this dramatic population loss, Experts estimate human ancestors had between 58,600 and 135,000 breeding individuals. According to geologic evidence, a major factor may have been an extreme cooling event that began around 900,000 years ago, which would have turned a lot of the land into semi-deserts. This cooling period coincided with a known severe drought in Africa, and the decline of other species that our human ancestors may have used as a food source. The fossil record in Africa and Eurasia between 950 and 650,000 years ago is patchy, and the discovery of this bottleneck may explain this chronological gap. Nick Ashton, an archaeologist at the British Museum in London wrote from an alternative perspective, he says he was intrigued by the tiny size of the population that survived. This would imply that it occupied a very localized area with good social cohesion for it to sustain itself. Of greater surprise is the estimated length of time that this small group survived. If this is correct then one imagines that it would require a stable environment with sufficient resources and few stresses to the system. So maybe it wasn't too bad after all, and this small population lived a relatively easy and peaceful lifestyle. 2. A 300,000 year old jawbone find comes from an unknown lineage. A team of researchers led by the Chinese Academy of Sciences has recently analyzed the fossilized jawbone, partial skull, and leg bones of a hominin who lived around 300,000 years ago, in what is now eastern China. The remains, discovered in Walongdong, China, belong to a 12- or 13-year-old individual. The fossils possess features that do not match those of previously identified ancestors of modern humans such as the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. This suggests that the remains may belong to a previously unknown human lineage. By conducting a morphological and geometric assessment of the fossils, the researchers found that the jawbone exhibited unique features, including a triangular lower edge, a unique bend, and no chin. Although the hominin resembled modern humans to a certain degree, it seemed to be more closely related to older species from the Middle Pleistocene period like Homo erectus. The analysis of the skull revealed that the facial bones were more similar to those of modern humans than the jawbone was. This unique combination of features suggests the possible coexistence of three lineages in Asia during the Middle Pleistocene, Homo erectus, Denisovan, and a third unidentified lineage that seems to be a step closer to Homo sapiens. This Walongdong fossil may not be directly linked to our ancestral lineage, more of a cousin like what the Neanderthals were. Or it may hint that Homo sapiens' evolution was more gradual and nuanced than previously thought, and that we are uncovering only snippets of that evolutionary history. 3. The First Americans Some of the first humans to venture into the Americas during the last ice age hailed from China, according to a DNA study of ancient and modern indigenous people. Scientists used mitochondrial DNA to trace a female lineage from northern coastal China to the Americas. By integrating contemporary and ancient mitochondrial DNA, the team found evidence of at least two migrations. The first was between 26,000 and 19,500 years ago during the last glacial maximum, when ice sheet coverage was at its greatest and climate conditions in northern China were probably inhospitable. The second occurred during the melting period, between 19,000 and 11,500 years ago. Around the same time as the second migration, Another branch of the same lineage migrated to Japan, 
which clears up a mystery of why there are similarities in the artifacts of Chinese, indigenous American, and indigenous Japanese peoples. The study matches well with what is known about the archaeological record of Japan, and lends weight to current models of how humans came to populate the Americas. Though it was long assumed that Native Americans descended from Siberians who crossed over the Bering Strait's ephemeral land bridge, more recent genetic, geological, and archaeological evidence suggests that multiple waves of humans journeyed to the Americas from various parts of Eurasia. It isn't known which specific place in northern coastal China this expansion occurred and what specific events promoted these migrations, more evidence, and ancient genomes, are needed to answer these questions. 4. Europe's first permanent residents settled in Crimea. Around 37,000 years ago, the earliest modern humans established permanent residence in Europe. In a mere 7,000 years, these first Europeans descendants gave rise to a culture that included Venus figurines, intricate stone tools, and captivating jewelry. Anthropologists have long known that some human groups began leaving Africa around 60,000 years ago. Most of them were nomadic, not staying long in any particular area. Around 40,000 years ago, a major climatic crisis, combined with a supervolcano in the Phlegrian fields in Naples, southern Italy, wiped out most of the humans and Neanderthals in Europe. These events have led anthropologists to wonder when the ancestors of today's Europeans arrived and decided to settle down. Researchers now believe they have found Europe's first permanent residence among a collection of skeletons from the site of Buran Kaya III on the Crimean Peninsula. Buran Kaya III, a cave site originally discovered in 1990, boasts rich deposits of human activity dating from the Middle Paleolithic to the Middle Ages, a span of at least 50,000 years. But archaeologists are most interested in layers dating from 38,000 to 34,000 years ago, as they include objects such as stone tools and carved bones similar to artifacts from the Gravettian culture, a hunter-gatherer culture who lived in a bitterly cold period of European prehistory, and specialized in big-game animal hunting, making various tools and weapons from their remains. The Buran Kaya culture spread across Europe starting about 38,000 years ago, which suggests that Buran Kaya may be the earliest evidence of permanent settlements in Europe and may have given rise to the Gravettian culture. To investigate the idea that the Buran Kaya people were the ancestors of the Gravettian toolmakers, National Center for Scientific Research sequenced the genomes of two male skeletons found at Buran Kaya that were carbon dated to about 35,800 to 37,500 years ago. After sequencing the two men's genomes and comparing them with those of other people who lived in Europe around this time, both men shared the highest similarity to Gravettian-associated individuals found several thousand years later in Europe. Therefore, the individuals studied here contributed both genetically and technologically to the population that gave rise to this civilization around 5,000 years later. These findings placed the Crimean Buran Kaya people were among the first population wave that entered Europe after the eruption of the supervolcano in the Phlegrian fields of southern Italy, making these the first known permanent settlers of Europe. 5. An unknown hunter-gatherer lineage was discovered. Researchers investigating prehistoric DNA have discovered a mysterious group of hunter-gatherers that lived in Siberia more than 10,000 years ago. The find was made during a genetic investigation of human remains in North Asia dating from as far back as 7,500 years ago. The study also revealed that gene flow of human DNA not only traveled from Asia to the Americas, as was previously known, but also in the opposite direction meaning people were moving back and forth constantly along the Bering Land Bridge. In the same study, scientists analyzed 10 prehistoric human genomes from previously discovered individuals who lived in North Asia as far back as 7,500 years ago. Many of the individuals were found in an area known as the Altai, a crossroad for migrations between Northern Siberia, Central Asia and East Asia for millennia, located near where modern-day Russia, China, Mongolia, and Kazakhstan come together. Scientists discovered that a previously unknown group of hunter-gatherers in the Altai was a mixture between two distinct groups that lived in Siberia during the last ice age. The genetic data analysis revealed they were descendants of both Paleo-Siberian and ancient North Eurasian people. This suggests that human migrations and admixtures were the norm and not the exception for ancient hunter-gatherer societies. 
a man's remains in Nisnatit Keskin Cave in the Altai, who was found with a religious costume and artifacts one might expect of a shaman. His bones date back about 6,500 years, making him a contemporary member of this newly revealed hunter-gatherer Altai group. But the research team's analysis revealed that he had genetic ties with groups in the Russian Far East, more than 900 miles to the west of his remains. This implies that individuals with very different genetic profiles were living in the same region, implying mobility of both culturally and genetically diverse individuals into the Altai region. This discovery raises a number of interesting questions and possibilities about people in the region at that time. It could mean this man's ancestral group he came from was far more widespread than previously thought, or he could have been a prehistoric traveling religious practitioner or healer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos.